When I listen to a song for the first time, I get to hear it as a new song. The melody is a story, and I'm on the edge of my seat as it plays through. No other time I listen to it will it sound so novel. On the second listen, it's a song I vaguely know. Now I'm more interested in a different aspect, maybe focusing on the rhythm guitar I didn't give much attention to before. If you said it was just a song, you'd be forgetting that I'm listening to it. The song plays what it must, but my ears hear what they will. On the tenth listen to a song, I might remember the first time I heard it. What I heard then and what I hear now couldn't be more distinct. Now the chorus is obvious and I know the structure well. Listening to an all new song might resemble that first listen more than the same song would now. On twelfth listen, I might recall the time I played the song on vacation with my friends. The verses no longer contain just words. They tell me the story of a road trip with rolled down windows and blue skies. The scents remind me of the wind blowing through the car. The roaring guitars hold all the warmth I felt on my hands as I drive. There's sunny joy radiating from every note. The song is starting to hold not just sound, but also memories. Some memories are events, others are just raw emotion. On the next listen, I'm walking home from a party. The melancholy stroll as I leave my friends sinks into the music. Bittersweet tones make themselves more apparent than they ever have. Regardless of the scenario, the memories of what the song sounded like and what I felt at that moment are preserved. Now when I listen, I can hear the story of a joyful drive and a sorrowful walk. They blend together to form a layered sensation. The feelings grow more complicated as I let myself walk through life. Opposing feelings of hate and love mix together into something new. Sentiment can be found in everything. I've never held a book that is no more than just a book. If I've read it, then it's the memories of the stories it tells, where I was when I read it, who I knew around that time, what I was feeling as I finished it. Eventually, when something holds enough of me, I can use it as a mirror to see myself. I'll never see the full picture, but I can see it in this new lighting. Events that might have been forgotten are preserved, and the something they're preserved in highlights their importance. There's no bias and there's no judgment. There are only memories that don't discriminate between physical and emotional. If you ever said it was just a song, you'd be forgetting that I'm listening to it. When you live as you, you'll find yourself and your world indistinguishable. That brings me to my favorite album of all time, Paul Barabo by Paul Barabo. I first stumbled across it through a rabbit hole of similar artists on Apple Music. The amount of times I thought, I will never forget this moment, far outnumbers the amount of moments I haven't forgotten. The most memorable moments aren't usually the ones I would suspect either. My first actual memory of listening to Paul Barabo was while I was waiting for an order at my university's Wendy's. I leaned my skateboard against the wall and waited for my order as the song Boys Like Me started. It was as mundane as a moment could possibly be. If I were to recall now my last meal from a fast food chain, I might mention ordering, grabbing my food, eating it, all of which are perfectly mundane on their own. But between these actions is the limbo where I spend most of my life, a perfectly bland space where time goes to be forgotten. But somehow I managed to catch this moment before it could slip away. I don't remember all the details perfectly, but I know enough to fill in the gaps. I may have been anxious about school or stressed about a relationship. Something was certainly getting to me, but for that infinite runtime of the track, I heard the world make room for me. Over the next couple of years, I would always start my one-hour trip from college to home with Paul Barabo's self-titled record. At times, the excitement of going home for the holidays painted the album with a bright palette. Other melancholy trips where I had to leave one life for another highlights the morning verses. Sometimes that trip smelled like spring, and others it felt like the bitter chill of winter. When I listen to the album now, all these feelings rise together. It's hard not to love something that holds so much of you. The sorrowful verses of Paul Barabel's album resonate with me in a way few albums have. The stories feel painfully familiar and are told in a vulnerable and sincere way. His voice is passionately honest, as if he feels compelled to tell me what he's feeling. The words are shouted because if they weren't, nothing would come out. Despite my endless number of listens, I always tear up by the time I get to never get to know. Over the last few years since I discovered Paul Barabo, I started using it as a tool to help me deal with pent-up emotions. Few things have been around, both on a life-changing vacation and on a drive to my best friend's funeral. The only thing that can always be there is me, but I've put myself into this album, so now I can come too. I never know if the tears it creates are for Barabo or for myself. Either way, they help me get to a place I need to be. Sometimes I really miss it. Maybe I'm being stupid. Or just a little sentimental.